What is we talked about this telephone exchange generally in the United States is called also CO and your CMTS DSL DSLM devices etc is placed there. The picture of it. These are the phone lines. Okay. Again, phone lines. Have you ever seen the in the exchange these copper lines? And the Islam is here. Okay provide this broadband access and here level 3 is one of the tier 1 cell provider and actually the biggest one as per the uh, number of connect days and um, they either own these fiber submarines and of course inside the countries also they have some metro fiber uh, intercity fiber uh, either they have they own these fibers or in the consortium or uh, they are getting the capacity from the cable owner but this is the world map and uh, they are connecting. I think not entire world uh, as I remember, but Tata is connecting entire world. Level three may not, most probably not. It depends on where they are doing the business uh, and demand, right? Their customers and they will connect. And they, if they are seeing a potential in any region which they are not there yet, they can go. Another tier one provider, okay? and depends on which region they they are operating in they have customers etc they will connect those and they will check maybe buying a area maybe a deploying fiber being a cons in the consortium or maybe some cable owners in the consortium might want to sell its shares etc another one gtt tier one their fiber connection as you can see there are lots of uh, european uh, countries here right they are connecting also those european countries here as well and then they have transatlantic here as well between united states and europe transatlantic i think they have also transpacific cable as well which i am not sure yeah here i think here is japan Yeah, DWDM they can use, of course. POPs is a physical location, point of presence, and the service provider has multiple of them, okay? And uh, it's sometimes just a data center, okay? And, uh, but of course, mainly the company says lots of POP locations, and then um, those POPs might be connected directly to the some hub location then hub and spoke but uh, in general you would see the ring architecture between the pops and um, pop location can be located in the other data center provider location okay or another self provider data center so pop can be anywhere so that's the idea then then also there is a um, it doesn't have to be in the another data center or that isp's data center there is another type of data center is called carrier neutral data centers uh, for example Equinix. okay Equinix, i think um not i think in the united states and apec i'm not sure about europe but they have multiple data centers so lots of different isps etc come together there okay and then they they can they can have those Equinix actually not they can they are having also the ixps okay these are uh, real deployments I'm talking about. They have lots of IXPs there, creating an exchange and then doing settlement repairing, which we will talk next week. So pop location can be one, pop location of one service provider can be anywhere. Sometimes in different service provider locations, sometimes even their customer location. Generally small service provider you might see in that case, but um, very, very small provider, but there is, these are the pop locations, as I said. Lots of pops, and this wide area network I am showing here, it can be a centralized place. It can be these, these facilities, these pop locations can be connected in a ring architecture. Okay, of course, underlying fiber infrastructure, which we were talking about. And um, they, they might have data centers, more than one, sometimes only one. Depends on the company, okay? I know company just, uh, have one data center and generally more than one and once they do generally they deploy in the different cities those data centers 
okay? And connect those data centers again through the fiber infrastructure. As I said, I know also the providers has hub and spoke, okay? Bringing all the, their uh, even smaller pops in a hub location but they are forced to actually in that case because the, um, they were receiving the fiber from the na uh, national telco and national telco forced them to bring the fiber the hub location because uh, normally hub and spoke may not make sense two things for economy why because sometimes you have smaller uh, pop locations you might hear the term as satellite pops access pop as well those pops are really carrying small amount of traffic and generally what people are doing if they are not forced to carry to the hub location uh, those satellite pops are connected to the nearest uh, higher level pops so they have more than one level of pop hierarchy so nearer pops uh, has much more traffic and then those nearer pops are connected either in a ring architecture together okay or again to the hub side maybe to the data center so on and so forth so yeah these are the things co-location center in the data center basically the colo provider or data center provider is providing you power uh, space the cooling everything then uh, not only service provider but enterprises and other type of businesses can rent the space and then uh, those cabinets those racks basically provided by the co-location provider then uh, they can create one service provider in the another colocation center, some someone else's colocation center, they can create their pop location. Okay. One of the colocation center, for example, this one. Lots of racks. And I think, wait. Can you see here the um, there are some cages? Okay. And in the data center, you see lots of cages like this. And of course. There is a card system that you can access inside the data center. Then inside the data center, there are individual cases for the companies. Then you access only to your cage through your uh, access card. Meet me room. These are the data center terminologies, but you, they are used very heavily again. Place in the colocation center where the telecommunication, telecommunication companies actually physically connect to another one another and exchange without paying local fees. So what, what is this? In the data center, there is a, a space, spe special place called Meet Me Room. All the carriers, all the, all the service providers come together and they just cross connect to the fiber patch panel there and then have access to other networks as well. Okay, it's also called a carrier hotel as well. Customer A, customer B in the Meet Me Room. These are the providers. Okay, they just connect through the patch, fiber patch, to each other in the same place in the data center. Okay, Meet Me Room. It can be just like a couple of uh, cabinets, but coming the different carriers' fiber. Okay, different providers' fiber to the this place, Meet Me Room, in the data center. And now it's just about connecting, cross connecting different providers. Okay. As you can see, these, these are really called Meet Me Room by the Colo Centers. Once you also work in the service provider domain, you might hear uh, we have uh, gigabit po pops, we have access pop, backbone pop, transit pops, etc. Pops can be classified based on the hierarchy. So if you have, let's say, as I just said, uh, satellite pops, which has very low amount of amount of traffic and doesn't make sense to bring them to the long distance fiber to the centralized place but just connecting to the nearest pop and then nearest pop to the uh, long distance uh, fiber so then access and the core or backbone pops it's called okay and as i said the pops can be classified in different ways like uh, based on the speed and if you are providing let's say from those pops a gigabit connection and then some pops maybe terabit connection etc the backbone pops for example. okay so based on the speed based on the uh, network hierarchy pops and as i said access pop sometimes also uh, called as the satellite pop what uh, service provider generally deploy in those pops 
sometimes the of course depends on what type of service they are providing to the customer if residential we talked about the dslm cmts everything right we know now but what about businesses we didn't talk much for example uh, one large enterprise cust customer of the service provider those uh, customers can be directly con connected to the router but in general they use also switch for aggregation so ESLAM is connected to switch and business customer is connected to the switch and all the residentials whatever the services this company dsl ftx etc it's connected to the switch those termination equipment uh, olts dslam cmts is connected to switch then once you aggregate those you use uh, higher capacity link between the switch and the router uh, those routers now will be connected okay either it, it can be connected anywhere from one pop this service provider can have direct internet connection to the outside world, IP transit, okay? So they can use different routers for different fun function or on the one router, just one router, they can use multiple services, like they can uh, use to connect to the other POPs in a ring topology which I was talking about, or they can um, have connection to the IP transit they if uh, maybe from that pop if they are going through the nearest ixp internet exchange point they might use same device for multiple purposes okay but problem with this is fate sharing if somehow that uh, device goes down or uh, goes down you might if it's critical pop and then you might use second router right but what if somehow there is a security problem and let's say internet based uh, attack okay because uh, maybe you, you have also IP trust from that inter internet based attack now might affect uh, your uh, IXP circuits and also you might affect your interpop traffic as well so if it's really critical you might see in uh, some network I see different routers for different purposes as well but get com complex of course so on and so forth I know also uh, some people what they do they place only just single router in the pop and their argument is because our pops are very close to each other okay very close to each other so if one of our customers they say business customer critical one what we are doing is instead of placing two routers in the pop we are placing only one router single router in the pop but since the our pops are very close to each other this critical customer is we are connecting basically to the r2 pops so we are providing the redundancy in this way. yeah geo redundancy you can call it yeah the, the, there is also problem with this one but let's not go there but these these are real deployments people has lots of um, different ways they are choosing but yeah of course uh, placing now for these guys uh, two routers in each pop would be more costly as well and uh, I know those guys and the cost is important for them to be honest as you can see from this picture what they call it here just uh, see my mouse access and backbone pop and this is real picture of the one public document of course not my customer etc access and backbone pop one of the ways of showing the pop architecture these guys core distribution they call it okay i think indian one so depends on the hierarchy depends on speed is you don't see much but uh, there was uh, gigabit pop, pops uh, terabit pops uh, etc and hierarchy generally two levels uh, there are uh, just flat all of them connected together or up location or in a ring as well all of them not 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 much three level but this two and one level pop very common in the real deployments and as i said if you are in the search provider come to that uh, group uh, people are talking about their pop hierarchies all those things etc and you might see what people are doing in the real life Okay, uh, yeah, also uh, IP pop and PLS pop, this is very, very common. For example, why IP pop, not the MPLS pop? What you see is, um, let's say this business is providing, this uh, operator is providing 
VPN service as well, but maybe not from each and every port. So that's why they are not basically extending MPLS up to each and every pop, okay? They might just use IP and or just layer two between those pops and the MPLS enabled pops, okay? And I, let me give you just one example. They are pro one company, will not give the name, a company, what they do, for example, is um, they are providing FTTH, okay? And they have a modem and uh, those, those uh, modems basically has a PPPoE session between the modems and the, their PPPoE server in the network. They don't have uh, MPLS in each and every pop. They have some satellite pop, and from those satellite pops, once they have FTTH, and what they do, they carry the, because for the PPPoE, what you need? Layer 2 connectivity between the customer and the server, I told you before. What they do is um, they are carrying with the VLAN between the satellite pop and the MPLS enabled pop. And all the MPLS enabled pop basically can talk each other and they have also data center. And in the data center, they have this PPPoE server. And between data centers, uh, data center and the, all those pop locations, they have VPLS. So they can carry now between satellite and the uh, higher level pop. VLAN inside the VPLS uh, between the MPLS enabled POP and uh, data center. So up to the data center, they are carrying now those VLAN and now PPPoE can go through the entire uh, backbone. So this is one uh, deployment in real life. So yeah, as I said, this one access and uh, backbone POP, MPLS nodes, this, this is showing a lot of things actually. Uh, where is IP enabled? from this, just you will see this, and then check. For example, this one stands for what? Back pump pop, okay? Back pump pop, you back pump pop. But what about here? Access pop, right? So you have an access to the customer here, then terminating those access pop, coming to the closest back pump pops, and for redundancy, it seems to, uh, to the back pump pop, okay? And then from those back pumps, you can have MPLS and whatever, maybe they are, if they are in the data center, if there is a data center, there is blue, this one here, and in this uh, part of the diagram, we don't see, but yeah, they generally, what they do is maybe back pump up, if there is a data center here as well, you see another uh, column here as well, which shows the data center as well. And if from there, from that pop, which is inside the data center, if they are doing peering as well, peering as well, then you would see this color here as well, okay? So it depends from, if you have 50, let's say, pop locations, okay, you don't have IP connectivity from all those 50 locations. I generally, when, when I talk with the SA new uh, search provider network, how many IP transit you have? Uh, we have three different transit, okay? From those three different transit, even if they have multi-home to each and every transit, okay, what they do generally, if they have, let's say, one data center and 50 pop, they place, they don't have to, but they place one connection to the transit on the data center, and then uh, lots of pop locations, you said 50, right? Uh, remaining two, two uh, transit, IP transit connectivity on the pop locations, Okay, and of course they don't go and deploy those uh, remaining two transit in the pops which are very close to each other, because why? Optimal routing, right? Imagine, let's say, their 50 location in, inside this country and uh, one pop is collecting the north and one pop is collecting the south uh, of the country's traffic, okay? So basically, you don't want to send uh, thousands of kilometers or maybe hundreds of kilometers. Uh, you don't want to utilize your uh, fiber backbone. But instead, if uh, closer pops are basically would send the internet traffic to the uh, closest uh, internet exit. So those those kind of arrangement people do. In terms of IP MPLS, there is only layer two VPLS based pops. 
uh, is there no day 3 EPM pops in diagram or is it covering both the score bank? No, no, MPLS, VPLS, they might, they might, once you have, for you to have VPLS, what you need to have in the first place? Transport, right? Those transport tunnels. Now, if you have transport tunnels, which means once you have PE to PE, to PE reachability, can you carry on top of that VPLS plus layer 3 VPN plus EVPN plus PBB EVPN plus Ethernet over MPLS? You can. So once you say MPLS, that's enough. But maybe maybe there is no customer who demand for the um, layer 3 VPN. Maybe no. Okay. And as you can see, Metro Pop also core pop, backbone pop. But uh, for, for me, it's important for you to understand how they are selecting, how they are connected, and uh, how they place their intent gateways. And uh, one pop can have transit connectivity and also peering, and of course, the interpop to the other pops connectivity, etc. But it seems I need to put um, one slide here to show. Not each and every pop has the IP transit. Not each and every pop has the peering connectivity. Imagine if um, your pop is very, uh, let's say you want to connect in links, okay? London Internet Exchange and um, you, uh, you, you have UK based operator. What you will do, you will connect, let's say uh, your, probably you would create one pop in that uh, location also and connect that location to the closest higher level pops, right? And what is urban rural we talked about is actually very high levels uh, density areas, population density areas is called urban and very low level, uh, not much people are living, etc. or living also very far from the, each other in the village, etc. It's called rural areas. And uh, we talked about rural and urban areas so far a lot. I mentioned probably it's clear now. Now, if you have question, I can take. Virtual pop is the same of co-location almost, yes. You don't uh, place your physical equipment in the remote pop, but uh, utilizing the uh, other companies, they provide you also the devices, routers, etc. whatever you need there. I have a suggestion for creating collaboration between us. What's that? Uh, no. So I, I will not lead at least that. Already we created a Slack and uh, if it gets bigger, okay. But um, as I said, if you are from the service provider background, I will put you in the service provider engineering group. So hopefully you enjoyed.